Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 272. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're going to do our DVD rundown for the week of August 6th. Mm -hmm. Break in through to that two-thirds. Or this, yeah, oh yeah, Something dang, like I guess uh, last month was the second half of the year. Dang, my math sucks. Yeah, we're not we're not good at the numbers. Welcome to the eighth month. There we go. That's, yeah. that's <laughs> <laughs> two-thirds, something like that. Yeah, let's I don't say two-thirds. Starting we're, the last third. We're, 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 the last third-der. Yeah. We're not good at the math. Trimester. Maths. Yeah. Last, the last trimester of the hey, year. Hey, oh, high five. Yeah. Very good, yeah. Words. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, that being said, it's kind of an interesting week. Not you know, too shabby. Not too shabby. Um, At least some big releases. Big releases, some good stuff, some mm -hmm. smaller stuff, a lot of good smaller stuff yeah. as well. Uh, the big one, though, that we have to begin with is Oblivion. Mm -hmm. I'm talking Tom Cruise, and I'm going to butcher this name, but it's Joseph Kaczynski. Oh, yeah. Who did the Tron Legacy. Yes, yes. Which just came out, and I think he's going to do the third Tron here now that this is done. I believe so, yes. Guy known very much for his visual effects. Um sort of set in a future, I don't know what you call it, dystopia or yeah. whatever. Post-apocalyptic. Uh, yeah, where Earth dystopia. has been destroyed, mm -hmm. and it's sort of believed that no no humans are left there. Humans are kind of discovered as still being mm -hmm. there. And the, mm -hmm. the, and the plot thickens from there. Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> the destruction, the uh, apocalypse mm -hmm. might be a little bit more complex and nefarious than first mm -hmm. understood. I think Tom Cruise plays like a drone pilot, essentially, yes. who's making sure yeah. that their Earth stays cleaned up. Yes, one of the last humans on the planet. Yes. Um, you know, it's gotten very mixed reviews. Yes. Um, it's very visually beautiful, for sure, but definitely split a lot of people, much like Tron Legacy. You know, yeah. a lot of people complain about the plot, being an amalgam of a lot of sci-fi mm -hmm. tropes, you know. Yeah, and, that's kind of the problem when you're just trying to pump out, like, sci-fi, post-apocalyptic, sci like, visual effects fests, is yeah. you get to a point where it's like, you're either going to have a really complicated new story, or you're going to have some kind of rehashing of some older things yeah um i think it was originally uh, the original um oblivion project was like an eight page little story written by kaczynski <laughs> kaczynski and it, uh then that slowly has become adapted turned into screenplays i think they're actually going to take that original eight page and turn it into a comic form <laughs> and release it soon ish that's cool so you know in terms of releases this week it's probably one of the most complete i mean it's yeah. got the blu-ray dvd digital copy ultraviolet all together um it's got an audio commentary with joseph kaczynski and tom cruise which i think is pretty awesome nice. they actually yeah. got him to come in and do that yeah it's supposed to be a pretty interesting lively and an informative one too hmm. which is awesome uh we've got a whole bunch of a five part making of featurette called promises of a new world which includes segments like destiny which is about the development of the story shooting in iceland stuff like that hmm. voyage which is about the inspiration the design and implementation of the ships you know combat about the action stunts so it's about like 48 minutes worth of material which is a pretty decent slice of making too up shabby, stuff. Yeah. yeah. Then you also have a little deleted scenes yeah who cares uh, but you also then have a uh, isolated m83 score for the project so for fans of M83, you know, nice. you know, it's interesting to sort of see musicians mm -hmm. transitioning into like scoring, like scoring, Trent Reznor yeah. and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So it's interesting to sort of see that take its own yes. element and put that off on its own. So I st it still blows my mind that during the making of this movie, Tom Cruise celebrated his 50th birthday. Yeah, well, yeah. 50 man. Think Can about this: they just announced that the new uh, Mission Impossible is going to be directed by Christopher McCrary. So. Mm -hmm. He's going to be 50-something when that comes out. Yes, Probably at least 52, I would yep. say. So, But he'll probably be playing a 36-year-old. Of course. <laughs> Who's banging some, like, 20-year-old. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's how we roll in Hollywood. <laughs> Sigh. Yes. Um, <laughs> nevertheless, we'll talk about that another day for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yes. But, you know, we're going to move into some other releases. Mm -hmm. We've got some solid smaller films yeah uh, first one i want to mention is the place beyond the pines yes. from director derek san france who did blue valentine yes which got a lot of buzz for the performances mm -hmm. of michelle williams and ryan right who is also starring in this movie as well. yes ryan gosling is. yes well his part is well, much okay. different than you might imagine he is in the cast yes let's say you you don't want to like it's it's a weird sort of interesting film. It's sort of like I don't know what to describe it as a three part story. Okay. Where there's like you know a part focused on Ryan Gosling, a part focused on Bradley Cooper, and then sort of a part set in the future that deals with the 
effects of their wives on their children. Got so it. it's sort of this inter- interesting. Yeah, it's a much more complicated sort of um, involves some narrative. bank robberies, right? Yep, he is a bank. Ryan Gosling is a bank robber. Mm-hmm. Bradley Cooper is a cop, sort of going up oh, against each other. It's it's a really, it's a solid, interesting story. You know, it's not, it's not quite as like simple and easily digestible as just like you know heat or some other bank robbery gotcha. type thing. It's point it's, break. Yeah. Awesome. It's it's much more sort of about you know family and the impact of actions on the future and children and stuff like that as much as it's about bank robberies and hmm. stuff like that. But you know the release is sort of okay, I guess. Um, it's got a Blu-ray, DVD, digital copy, and ultraviolet all together. It's cool. Can't you know, go wrong with that. that. There's some deleted and extended scenes, and then there's an audio commentary Terry with uh, Derek C in France, and that's it. Hmm. So little bit light yeah but you know it's an it's an interesting film worth checking out and i'd be interested to hear his commentary because we had an interview with him on the mcguffin uh, if you go to the mcguffin site you can check out our interview with Derek in france very interesting dude very nice guy uh i would definitely be curious to hear what he has to say in long form about making this film yeah. and sort of working with ryan gosling multiple mm-hmm. projects you know him and winding ref seem to have some yes. sort of special connection with Quite him that they keep you know redoing or doing mm-hmm. more and more projects so i'd be curious to check that shot out. a lot on location at a uh, synecdoche new york mm-hmm. which uh, interestingly enough is where the movie gets its title from because synecdoche is the mohawk word for the place beyond the pines or beyond wow. the pine plains interesting yeah no, the the place beyond the pines also has a very uh, probably clear meaning in terms of the context of the film as well. Yes. So it's probably like a double yeah. entendre mm-hmm, or something mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm, you know? mm-hmm. Moving right along, though, we're going to go to another smaller release, probably I would say even smaller in terms of scale, and that was Thankfully. on the road. We're talking the film adaptation of the Jack Kerouac the classic, classic American novel. Mm-hmm. Um, Sadly, this is a much smaller scale release, and you can either get it on Blu-ray and DVD, so very basic. But um, I want to ask, were you a fan of the novel? Have you read the novel? Yes, I'm quite a fan of the novel. Uh, I feel like it's maybe one of those... I, I feel like there's certain literary classics that should remain untouched, mm. not because they're unfilmable, but just because the quality of them sure. would be lost upon filming. Sure. And considering On the Road was basically written by Jack Kerouac on a crap ton of drugs I, I on mean, one long... He took one long sheaf of typewriter yeah, paper and taped it all they, together. They even include that in the film. And yeah. it's inspired I mean, it's inspired by his life. I mean, a lot yeah. of the characters have been identified as other people within his life. I mean, mm-hmm. it's essentially a story Ken about... Ken Kesey. Yeah, I mean, about, you know, a guy wandering across America mm-hmm. and sort of writing down these stories yes. that occur to him and stuff like Ken that. Kesey, uh, William S. Burroughs, mm-hmm. yeah, a lot of f- uh, beat writers, or beatnik writers, and just general people that were well-known. Uh, Nick Cassidy? No, I don't remember the other guy's name. There are a whole bunch of them. Yeah. If you go to, like, Wikipedia, they give you the exact sort of transmissions of yeah. it. Um, you know, I never read the book, and I will say I was sort of meh on the story. Like, it's okay. I feel like if I'd grown up with it, it might have impacted me mm-hmm. more. Like, I just, I, I mean... Yeah, I probably only read it in the last decade. So, yes. I mean, so. for me, later in time. I mean, but I will say that uh, we had it reviewed by Edward Davidson mm. on the site, and he gave an A minus, and I believe he was a fan of the novel. So, maybe there is some sort of solid yeah. adaptation in terms of. I'm not really surprised that its release is pretty small and not that huge, and that it didn't make a huge blip. I mean, this movie was stuck in production hell for a long time. I yeah. mean, this is how long. The movie took so long to make that uh, there's a variety of actors auditioning for the sure. two main lead roles. <laughs> One pair was Brad Pitt and Ethan Hawke, who both auditioned when they were incredibly young. Uh, 2005, Joel Schumacher planned a version with Colin Farrell and Billy Crudup. Wow. Uh, and when Walter Sal, Sal, Salas. Salas finally was able to do it, he originally at one point uh, had Jack Kerouac being played by James Franco and Joseph Gordon-Levitt playing the other character. Eventually, and even those didn't yeah. work and went with Garrett Hedlund and Sam Riley. Which is funny because Garrett Hedlund was in Tron Legacy, so we bring it back to that mm-hmm. again. Um, I Tron will... Legacy kind of day, I guess. Or week. I will say, though, that 
in terms of people who could theoretically direct it, mm. Walter Salas might be better than most because he directed the Motorcycle Diaries, yeah. which in essence is a very sort of similar yep. concept similar, about similar era, similar you know, similarly like kind of semi true journal. <laughs> yeah, I mean about sort of the impact of a journey on a person's life, yeah. stuff like that. So he seems fairly well equipped. It. You're right about the size of the thing. As I said, it's Blu-ray or DVD only. And in terms of special features, trailer. That is it. That is the bonus feature of this Woo! release. Yeah, really kind of set. I mean, and if you want even a more bonus feature, go to the MacGuffin site and hear our interview with Walter Salas. You know, mm-hmm. Super interesting dude. I can't believe they couldn't get him to do a commentary for it. <laughs> like, I, I, I absolutely... He could make the time for you, but maybe he couldn't make the time for a commentary. <laughs> well, or maybe they couldn't. Not only that, but it. like, if he wanted to, I feel like he could have made it a bigger release. The dude is a billionaire. Like, yeah. Exactly. Like, so yeah. When directing on the road. Come yeah. On. <laughs> Hillary was passionate about the project, so it's yeah, like, oh, yeah. well, maybe we can find the time. Yeah. I don't know. We're going to end uh, with a sort of uh, more noteworthy release, I mm. guess you will say, and that is Mud. Mm-hmm. This is Jeff Nichols' follow up to Take Shelter. Yes. Um, with Matthew Shirtless McConaughey. Yes. Taking, uh, stepping in for. Um, uh, Iceman. Um, oh, Michael Z- Shannon? Man- Michael Shannon, thank you so much. Yeah, I blanked on that right there. Um, so, yeah, Michael Shannon, obviously not in this one, but mm. very close to Jeff Nichols. I think they're working on their next project together. Gotcha. But, yeah, it's the story of um, two boys who encounter a fugitive and form a pack to help him evade bounty hunters and reunite, reunite him with his love, lost love. So, hmm. you know. Inter- Sounds interesting. Yeah. But, you know... I mean, obviously, you know, very visual, very thoughtful director. It's, it goes way beyond that. And Matthew McConaughey has had one of the hottest streaks in oh, the man. last few years in terms of picking great projects. Even with all those rom-coms that guy was in, he somehow remains unt- unkillable in the box office. It's a very charming guy. Very yeah. charming. And but, very shirtless. That helps. Well, you know, it does not hurt. Yeah. Uh, but you can get this in either a Blu-ray or DVD, both of which come with the ultraviolet version. So okay. it's a decent, decent not, thing. Not shabby. But in terms of special features, this also might be one of the best that uh, of the week. You know, we have a director's commentary, which you know Nichols talks about this being a passion project for him, and you know how deeply personal it is to him, and you know how he really worked to make this happen cool. uh there's cool. a nice a feature ad about a personal tale focused on nickel's long-standing desire to make this film interesting uh there's southern authenticity a feature ad discussing nickel's desire to write a poem for this part of the world hmm. there's uh, a discussion about the ensemble cast you know it's it's got a whole bunch of features wow. so it's decent you know rather fleshed out yeah pretty decent uh, flushed out release. I wish it came in all the formats, but you know, it's a smaller release, so you gotta yeah. do what you can. At, w- at some point, we have to accept that, you know, not everything's gonna be in every format. Sure. Answer. And Sorry. Jeff Nichols is an interesting director, so I, I would definitely would like to support him, because, you know, Take Shelter, I very much enjoyed. And yeah. I, I know this didn't, I mean, Nick reviewed that saying didn't love it quite as much as Take Shelter, but he still very much enjoyed it. And, I very mean, cool. Gotta appreciate people who are very interesting and creative in terms of the projects yes. that they do so yes very much very cool i'm on board with that mm-hmm. but that's our dvd rundown for this week there's a whole bunch of other stuff oh, that man, we could have yeah. talked about but we did not so it was actually a pleasant change yeah, in pace to of... actually have to throw some off, yeah. stuff off to yeah. the side rather know? than talk about like you know pilates 14 that's coming out or whatever uh, that's a good one i really like that one <laughs> 15 is a killer too but uh <laughs> let us know your thoughts on mcguffin that's mcguff.in we're at mcguffincast on twitter uh facebook.com slash mcguffin podcast phone number 323-761-9842 we're on itunes we're on blip.tv miro roku check in and get glue get some stickers Give some stars on iTunes, some reviews, and some thumbs on YouTube. We like it. We'll hit you back. uh, Comment. Please do. Comment about my ever-changing facial hair. What will it be next week? Or you could propose what it should be next week. Eh. 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 And we'll see you next time. (laughs) Magneto can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. It's tight, don't even try to bite the sun stars. Mr. Spock can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.